Okay, so I lived in Ecuador together with Andrea and I stayed in Otavalo. We were teaching in uh, the indigenous uh, school in La Rinconada and I was supposed to have a host family, but they couldn't find a one. There, there were still some misunderstandings, like we couldn't reach them and blah, blah, blah. So after two months, I just gave up on having a host family. But I had a very good teacher and she often invited me to her house. Uh, she was from a really big family. She had 10 other siblings and they all lived like next to each other. So they had their own like community and they had a lot of kids. So during a week, I didn't go there, but sometimes during the weekend, I went there for a sleepover. Also before Christmas, I went there to spend uh, many days. And uh, during the holidays, I, I spent these days with her family but uh, I didn't really need a host family because I met there really cool, cool people. And for example, this is Kate and she's my bestie. And this is Kevin. He, he doesn't speak very well English and that's how we met. Well, firstly, I wanted to do some projects in uh, my school and I didn't know how the indigenous community works there. And so I asked my mentor, Andres, like if he can help me, if I can ask him some questions and if he can say if this can work in my school or no. Uh, because in my school, there was nobody English speaking and I didn't speak Spanish at all. And so he gave me a contact for this person, Kate. She lived with me in the same town, Notavalo. And so I met her and then we just became friends. And then uh, uh, this was Kevin. He wanted to practice English also with other uh, university students because they had a lot of exams, mainly English exams to finish their study. And so we started to have some barbecues and these meetings. And then there was this part of this revolution. And uh, so, well, I didn't stay a lot, a lot in the house. I used to go outside and to walk with them and to meet the indigenous people in the streets because they knew everybody, Otovalo was small. So for me, this was my host family. This is her. It's her mother. Uh, she's divorced, but this is her Canadian boyfriend. He came there in December and it's just my family now. And these are my teachers. This is Kate. Uh, this is the teacher. I used to spend uh, time with her family. This is the director. And this is the English teacher, but she didn't speak English. Well, she she could speak maybe some basics, like what's your name, but she didn't speak at all. I think that she was afraid of pronunciation. Uh, these are guys from the beginning. We used to hike. This is Andrea. And so my school, we were teaching. Uh, well, I was in the primary school. It means that I there are seven grades. I didn't teach the first one. Uh, I did teach from the second up to seventh. Uh, in the second grade, I had only five kids, but third and fourth, I had 14, 14. In the fifth, I had 13 kids. In the sixth, I had 11. And in the last one, I had 20 or 21. It was changing. And so with the second grade, with the smallest ones, because I didn't speak Spanish at all from the beginning, then uh, and they have never had English uh, so they didn't know what to do with me with this gringa white person so we used to dance in the beginning of the class and then we were playing some memory games and we were coloring and and this stuff from the beginning they were looking at me like why is she dancing why, why is she singing but then they've got used to and they, well, they liked it because we moved a lot during it and so on. With the third and with the fourth grade, it was from the beginning really bad. Mirka, when you came there, I was just complaining like, no, I don't want them. I don't want to teach them. It's so bad. <laughs> and this is the third grade in the picture. But uh, then when we started to paint, well, I, I was just so 
not depressed but so frustrated because nothing worked because uh, every class had their own teacher but these classes this third and fourth they were together so it was 28 kids and there was just one teacher and so when she wanted to do something with one class she couldn't pay attention to the other one so she used to write something on the blackboard like for example apple and then they were just copying it like copy this word 20 times it was also their english like just copy or like dog and they were dog 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 just writing it dog and so it was how how it worked and then uh they came with it with the with the exercise book to a teacher and she was like okay this is nice you have 10 points this is bad you have five points and so in the beginning of our classes they just came i gave them the exercises and they just finished and then they came to me and they were like uh give us the points and i was like no now we are going to practice like play games or do some other exercise or whatever and they were like, no, no, no. And so it was really difficult from the beginning. And then I was so frustrated. So I started to paint them the English playground. And a lot of kids, they lived around the school. And there were big families. For example, there were siblings. And every sibling was in one class. Like, for example, there was a kid in the second grade. And this kid had a brother in the fourth grade. And had a sister in the fifth grade because they are like really big indigenous families. And so they saw me in the afternoons that I'm in the school. And so they used to come these, these little kids and they wanted me, they wanted to help me. And I was also like a little bit annoyed, but then I was like, okay, so go there and paint there uh, because it was really bad because, he, well, it was with the permanent colors, but then when I started to learn a little bit Spanish and I could understand a little bit, so we started to talk a little bit. And when we spent these afternoons together, well, we started to like each other in some ways. And also they've got used to me that I'm not like the Ecuadorian teacher. And then I started to do this exercise. Mirka, you told us that you don't let kids enter the classes. Uh, they must say, for example, the colors, like this is red. And if you say it correctly, then you can enter the class. And these kids, they were like so, so, well, in their minds, it is like when you enter the class, then you have the English class, but it didn't really work so. So if I wanted to teach them something, I did it in your way. Like if you want to enter this class, then you must say colors. So the first month we were just practicing colors. Like you must tell me, let's say five colors and then you can enter the class. And they really wanted to enter the class. But then they didn't want to do, again, anything in the class. So I changed the strategy and uh, I was teaching everything in front of the class. Like for example, we did repeat the colors, the numbers, like they had and they had to learn. Katka, you are stopping. I don't know, we couldn't listen to you. Katka, you, uh, you lost your voice. I think that's internet connection. She may be lost internet connection. Yeah, Maybe. because I can't see her video even, yeah. Okay. Maybe we can... Give her a second. Yeah, we can wait for a few seconds. Well, yeah, she, she disappeared, yeah. Hello, Theo. Uh, Thibault, excuse me. Hi. Okay, Katka is not still yet. Ah, yeah, she's, okay. <clears throat> Maybe we can use this moment when Katka is not here to introduce who is in the room. We didn't, ah, Katka is back. Okay, can we, we can continue, yeah? Yes. Hey, Asma, for my internet. Yeah, maybe at, from this moment we can change language for uh, all time because uh, Thibaut for, is here, our volunteer from Kerry, from France. It means it's okay that we will use English now, yeah? Yep. So what was the last part you heard, like about me complaining about the kids? Yeah? What I listened, it was that you moved your teaching in front of class and, and I, I expect that they can come only at the end, enter to the class, yeah? 
Yeah, yeah. And so they had to say, for example, three colors, the numbers up to 10. And then when they could say it, at least like somehow, more or less, because the I think you couldn't use my your head. Please, in Slovak, you know. And then I was like, okay, now touch your eyes, touch your head, and then you can enter. And so... The I think it's it's necessary to turn off the video. I think it can help a lot. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can try to switch uh, Katka mainly, and we will see if it's Katka. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's not us. It's her. <laughs> yeah. I think it's Katka. Yeah. Katka, that can you try to talk again? I think she re re restart her connection. Okay, maybe we can use this time what I said before that we can introduce ourselves who is in the room uh, before Katka will continue. Can we do that? Okay, it means because uh, I'm not sure if you know everybody in the room. Can we introduce ourselves before Katka will come back? Yes. Yeah, okay. Andrea, you are in the left corner. Maybe you can start. Me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, my name is Andrea. I'm from Czech Republic and I was spending my last six months in Ecuador and now I'm here for already a month. I came back and yeah, that's, is that enough? Okay, maybe Simona, you are under the Andrea, can you? Yeah, so hi, my name is Simona. Uh, I was spending my last six months in India. So I came back uh, not so far time ago and uh, yeah that's it <laughs> richard richard hello my name is richard hello. and uh, i was i was uh, for four months in uh, myanmar and i'm here in slovakia already three months so yeah and lucky you, luckily you didn't go to china have as how was your original plan yeah <laughs> yeah Okay, Lenka. Which one? Lenka Petrikova. Okay, uh, hiya. So I'm Lenka, I work in Kerik and uh, I was on the mobility visit uh, to see Hanka, how she's doing in Bolivia. I think we forgot to Okay, Petya. Okay, hi, my name is Petra. I'm from Czech Republic and I spent six months in Indonesia in the island Java. And yeah, I came back three weeks ago from from Malaysia. Yeah. Okay. So I'm back. I think Katka, yeah, Katka, you have two devices and you have computer and maybe you have iPad and it's not after fighting. It's not possible that you have Crisis a moment in one room. Uh, Thibault, can you introduce yourself? Uh, Thibault has, has problems with his uh, computer right now. Okay, it means Lenka, Rushkova. 
So hello, I'm uh, Lenka and I came back to Kerik after maternity leave in September. And uh, I am recently responding, uh, I was responsible for sending volunteers abroad also. And nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, Helen, uh, you couldn't speak. This is Helen, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, who is here? And uh, Lucy? Uh, maybe she's not here. Jonathan? You need? Yes, uh, that's me. Good camera move. Mm -hmm. Can you yeah. I'm Eric, um, since September. I'm from Austria and I'm, I'm more like passive, passive here. I think I just, just will listen. Yeah, but I think you are with Tibo in the same room and after we have uh, Echo. Maybe it's not good when you are in the same room. Yes, um, I will be muted. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will stay muted. Okay. Yeah, because when two people are with, uh, with, with two devices in one room, it's not working very well. We still yes, I will, I will um, be muted. Yeah. And Tibo, you couldn't use speak, uh, microphone, yeah? I can, I can. Okay, it means you can introduce yourself. Okay, so uh, yes, I'm Thibault, yes, I'm uh, to Francesco, uh, and I'm since uh, September in Kerik until like uh, end of August, and I'm teaching French and, and try to teach English. I think that we have a cut to speech, so everyone is presented, so we know who is here in the community, everyone is presented, Katku, Katka prišla a zmizla. Už som tu, počujete ma? Prepač, tu si, nevidela som ťa, tak môžeš pokračovať. Skončila si... Jorge, can you introduce yourself? You have to introduce yourself. Hola, hello, I'm Jorge, from Ecuador. Jorge je dobrovoľník cez Kodet tu z Ekvádoru na Slovensku, takže stále je, on je priamo z Kodet tu projektu. OK, and now we can continue with Katka and you can continue with your presentation. Yeah? OK, I will try to share the screen again so you can see some pictures. But my internet is really bad, so if you lose me again, then I'm sorry. Uh, okay, it's not working. Okay, maybe I will just follow the pictures and then I will say some other things. So in the end, when I was leaving, it was February and I noticed that there is the cardinal and they play it by, by playing the flower, eggs and this stuff with water. And so I asked my teachers if I can play carnival with my kids and they said, yeah, sure you can. And so I bought about 16 kilos of flour and then we were playing and this is how it, and you can see these are the new volunteers. Stop, I will stop you because you have something with the sound and you can hear very well. But at the beginning it was good, so I don't know if something happened to you. And what? Vôbec práve, že nie... A teraz je to dobré, môžeš pokračovať. OK, so these are the new volunteers. This is Kate, this is Mark, my kid. And yeah, so this is Carnival. You can see here kids, they were coming like, give us more, give us more, we want to play. And they took all, I don't know, everything what they found and they were just splashing water. Then we used to play many games during the school year and this is carnival. Yep. These are all dirty kids with new uniforms because when we had the English classes, they love to paint and color everything. So I was always buying new and new colors and then the uniforms were, were so dirty that after two months, they like the director of the school, she forced parents to buy new uniforms and these are the new uniforms so I think that parents they were not so very happy about this can you see this this is the new year's eve in Ecuador it is the best new year's ever 
and this is before Christmas. It's the most famous song in uh, in my school. It's indigenous song. And then we used to play also a lot of games during English. So there is a poster of a human body. They had to run outside to memorize like uh, the names of the human body and then run back to the class and to write it down. And this is the Bethlehem in Otavalo and it is Otavalo city. There's whole Otavalo. It's a very long tradition. It has, there was a 72 years old woman and she started doing this every year with just few boxes and old toys and now after a long long time many years really it's about 70 years old tradition and they do it every year and now there is the whole city uh i will show this okay and so in the school uh then i had the fifth grade they were quite they were good kids like sometimes they had mood like no we don't want to have english and i can understand it sometimes i didn't want to have english too but they were really awesome and then with the sixth and with the seventh grade uh they had the basics of english so i didn't need to teach them colors and numbers up to 10 and so i could do some other stuff and i decided to do it with uh throwing a ball you have a tennis ball, you throw them a ball, you ask them a question, what is your name? They throw you a ball back and they say, my name is. And when they understood this, this method, I started to do questions as how many brothers do you have? And they answered, I have, I don't know, 11 brothers. Or what color do you like? I like, I don't know, yellow color. And also they wanted to play outside and they were always like, can we go outside and to play? And so in the last month, we made a deal that if they can answer me correctly five questions in English, then they can go outside and play because there, there were 20 kids. So firstly, we did explain like I have, what does it mean? And so on. And then if they understood me in English, like how many brothers do you have? And they said, I have, I don't know, three brothers or I have two cats in house. Then it was like, okay, one question. Then another question was, where are you from? Or like this question, simple, basic conversations. And if they could answer five questions, they could go outside and play. And every time there were different questions with different vocabulary to repeat everything, the fruits, family members, just everything we had. So with the sixth and seventh grade, I had the best, best English classes. And uh, also about recycling. Katka, I don't know if you're talking, but we don't hear you. Ako to vyzerá s ostatnými? Počujete niečo? Ne, ne, neslyším. Nie, nie, že Katka zase... V pohode. Ale teda akože v pohode s tebou, ale aj Katka je preč. Aha, hej, Katka zase zmysla, hej. A Katka... A zase je tu. Áno, ja mám pocit, že ja keď to dám na tie fotky, tak ono mi to vždycky vypadne proste. Tak to skús dorozprávať bez fotiek. Hej, môžem, dobre, Ježišku, ďakujem. Okay, uh, and so with the kids, we did these little projects as collecting uh, water bottles. And then we, I don't know if you heard these parts, I will just repeat it. Uh, we sold the bottles and then we bought the skipping rope material and we made our own skipping ropes for the all these kids because they were quite tall. And when we had this Cultura Fisica, uh, they couldn't, played and they didn't have enough of them because there were 20 kids so and they liked it so that was the point and we also bought the volleyball net 
uh, and the parents, they helped me. They cut the trees and they brought them to the school. So me and one parent, we dig the holes in the ground and we made the very simple volleyball playground. And kids, they liked it. But of course, the, all these kids, they wanted to play there. So they are the kings of the school and the smallest kids, they didn't have a space there to play the volleyball. So then the teachers, they asked me if we can build one more volleyball playground. And so we build one more. And uh, yeah, we did also a workshop about brushing the teeth from the local organization. They gave me more than 100 uh, toothbrushes and toothpaste. And so we could give to every kid before Christmas. And, uh, and yeah. What, maybe questions? Oh yeah, and we did build the benches in the school. We planted few trees, plants. We made a compostery place. Uh, yes, we did a lot of activities with the third and fourth grade because when we had the class outside, then we had to do something inside. And we used the recycling materials as from, for example, the, the rolls from the toilet papers and so on. And uh, in the end, when I was leaving, uh, because of all these recycling projects, uh, we bought these normal plastic bottles and the lunch boxes, and we gave them to the kids. Well, the plastic bottles we gave only to the second grade, to the seventh, and to the sixth, because they didn't have enough in the shop. And then we bought the lunch boxes because during the, the breaks, there was a man outside of the school, he was waiting for the kids and they came there and they were buying food. But there is a, this cultural thing in uh, Ecuador that uh, they give you food in the plastic bag. And so we bought them these lunch boxes. They were supposed to write the name at the bottom. And when they had this break, they were supposed to go to this man and to ask for the food to the lunch box and to say that we don't want the plastic bag. And then they are supposed to eat it from the lunchbox and then to wash it again and use it again um, the other day. So the lunchboxes they've got in the ja preruším, skúsi ešte skú napraviť p- spojenie, lebo tam chrčí dosť u teba. Aha, už neviem ja ako, lebo už mi ukazuje, že mám dobrú, dobrý signál. OK, and so, yeah. The benches we made, it was from the reused pallets. So I found the person who sold us really super cheap pallets and then with the kids, uh, we did cut them and then we were building it. And you could see that there are some kids from the families who have a lot of energy and are maybe somehow like angry inside and they're like punching these, these cloves, claves in Spanish, I don't know in English. Uh, you could see the energy and everything. So I was like, okay, keep going, keep going, just don't hit me, please. And also the, um, these hammers and everything we had from the families around, so they helped us a lot and they did support all of our projects. And uh, for the trees, well, I was a little bit frustrated from the beginning because when I brought the trees to the school, uh, teachers, they were like, oh my, what are we going to do it? Are we going to plant it? Plant it? And I was like, here, there, and there. And they said, they said, no, you cannot plant it there. And I was like, why? And so in the end, we made a deal. So they gave me some place in the school where I could plant the trees. And so on the first day when I started planting it, we had to clean the, the ground. It was really difficult. I wouldn't say that it's so difficult. Uh, because there are all the roots in the ground and so on and kids that didn't help me and so I was a little bit disappointed that they are not helping me again as they used to help me always 
And so I was like, okay, so I will do it alone. And then you will see when you have fruits here uh, that it's a good thing. And then the other day, there were some kids asking me if I want help because I had a balance. And the fifth grade, they are super smart. They knew that I have these plastic balls and they really liked them. And so sometimes when I needed help, and there was nobody, so I told them, like, if you help me, I will give you five balloons. And so now they came, and they were like, miss, miss, if you help us, well, we will help you if you give us the balloons. And so I was like, okay, whatever, we will spend time together. And so the, the second day, they were helping me with the balloons, but then they just liked it, and they stopped doing it for something else. They just helped because they wanted it. And so I was super happy about it. And also other kids, they joined and they helped us. And also there was a teacher and she really loved plants. So she called also her class. They canceled like teaching all that day. And they were helping me with everything because it was a few weeks before my departure. And also we bought a lot of plants. Well, plants, uh, the cactus plants, because it can survive during July and August. And, uh, and we use the, like when you have a juice box, so we wanted to reuse it and uh, we wanted to plant it in the juice boxes and then to paint it. And yeah, and then we made this uh, iron. Excuse me, Katka, I will interrupt you. Maybe you don't need to go to so deep details because we have like some limited time. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay. Yes, yeah, so we do. Yeah, excuse me, and it's difficult to follow you because sometimes your sound is not so good. It means if you yeah, can... Yeah. Okay, more... I can finish because I was just like that. What should I say? Because I already said everything what I have in my paper. So okay. I was like just bubbling. Okay, maybe it's okay. fine. Uh, when the people are interesting, they will ask you questions. And at yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to stop, yeah, yeah because I am out of papers. <laughs> it's not important to use the time. Maybe it's when you have feeling that it's the end, you can finish. <laughs> okay, so I would like to finish. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me that I interrupt you. <laughs> it's fine. Okay, if anybody has some question, for Katka's project in Ecuador? Yes, Katka, I'm uh, curious if you were traveling in Ecuador. Well, I was traveling, but not so much. I went also to Galapagos and I went to the south, to coast, to Amazonia, but I was a little bit deeper. And there was really also a very awesome story. I met their guys, then we went to Colombia just for beer and we returned and they were quite awesome, yeah. But I didn't travel like so much because these colors and everything for the school, it was quite expensive. Mm -hmm. So I spent most time in Otavalo with friends and with alcohol. It was, it was enough, good for me. I think I like it. I'm I did really like it. If you took uh, Zemiakovica or what did you say? It's <laughs> used. <laughs> Zemiakovica? <laughs> the alcohol, what you told me, to kill all the virus in my belly. You remember? Repovica. Repovica. <laughs> yes. Did you take it with yourself? <laughs> no, I, uh, I took Tatrasti. Tatrasti? Okay. Yeah, 72 persons. Everybody was so excited about that. <laughs> So you were killing uh, all the viruses, yeah, bacteria? Well, I didn't really drink it because Ecuadorians, they did like it and they enjoyed it. So I was just taking videos of how they drink it and their facial expressions. It was yeah. very funny. Yeah. <laughs> okay, some other questions connected with project two. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is connected to to the project because uh, I was drinking with these uh, university students because they had exam and I don't know why